Now, as we continue with the reasoning and the teaching on this uh, Lidet, Melkam Lidet, Adarasachu, Ways Melkam Genna, and as we've been explaining the, the Mishkir, we ask the question Christ or Yeshua, who is called to Christ, the Moshia, Ha Moshia, has been born. But the real question for every true and faithful is our being born again and our rebirth and our growing up to him in all things. Because there's many that call themselves Christians, more likely churchians, but so be it. Many who call themselves Christian, but they have not grown up. Many immature Christians or those who don't bear the true fruit. Brothers and sisters may be different for I and I, and may I and I be able to show the true example of the true light of the King of Kings, Kadamawi Haila Selase, and his Christ, Kiyatachina Med Hanatachin, Iesus Christo. So let's continue with this particular teaching for January 7th, and this is the the 12th Sabbath in our cycle of Torah portion readings and feedings that's called um, Vayeche or Vayeche, which means, and he lived. And we've touched on a little bit of that connection with our patriarch, our ancestor, the black Yaakov or the black Jacob or the black Jack. That's who Jacob is. For I and I. And we're going to touch a little bit more on that, but this point about our rebirth, our being born again, as well as our growing up is very essential for us, for all of us, for I and I as well. This is one of the reasons why we share it, because as we study and show ourselves approved and we get into the Bamarinya and the Ethiopic, we begin to see why His Majesty says that language is the key of culture. And our divine heritage as Ethiopian Hebrews has been preserved in that true Ethiopian culture. And this is why the Lidet connection in January 7th and Genna is so very important. Because Genna or Lidet, what we know as Lidet, January 7th, is not when Yeshua or Jesus was born. Rather, it was when the announcement of his birth to be born through Kedistin Grimarium, the black virgin Mary was announced to the virgin, was announced to the black Madonna. Now, if we do the math, as we say, and face the facts and say, well, it's about nine months for a child from the seed conception to the birth without any of the extenuating circumstances is about nine months. Now, if we look at that period of time from January or Tassus, roughly Tassus uh, 20, 28th, 29th or so, and nine months forward is September 11th or the Ethiopian New Year. And then we begin to understand a little bit of the mystery of why even September 11th is so important, not just to them, but moreover to us as Ethiopian Hebrews. So let's continue with this teaching. And we were in, we were in Galatians, Galatians, Galatians chapter 3. And we wanted to touch on the point concerning the true intent of Torah. Could we speak of the Torah? the weekly Torah portions, and we speak that this is the RSS, Rastafari, Sabbatical Study or Sabbath Scrolls, number 12, which is known Bamarinya as Tekemet, and in the Hebrew as Vayichi or Vayichi, Vayichi, which means, and he lived. In the Amharic, Tekemet means, and he sat, but more over, and he was enthroned. Because we learn from the 11th sabbatical 
that Vayigash, which is the Hebraic name of that particular Torah portion, that it actually, in Bamarinya and Amharic, is Karabe, like Karav Magad, Karabe, to draw near, actually refers to the Hebraic Nagash. Now, Nagash, we haven't gone into the Hebraic Nagash or the Hebrew Nagus in more detail just yet. But when you, you can even go to, if you want to study Strong's Concordance, you can actually look this up. And when you look into the, 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 the word Nagash and Nogais, Nogais, these are the ways that the modern Jews pronounce it. But mainly, essentially, it's the, it's the Nehas, it's the Gemo, and it's the shout or the sheen or the N, the G, and the S, the S that has the syllabated or S or sh sound, as in Nagash, Bahar Nagash from the Ethiopic. So we see that within Vayagash, we have the root Nagash, which is connected with what Isaiah speaks about, the magistrates, the magistrates who are known as the the, the, the judges, but the, the Hebrew uses the very unique word, nogais, or neges, or nigus, in the Hebrew. So that's a connection that Judah, or that Judah was king as well. Judah stepped forward to Yosef in order to um, not allow Benjamin, who was the younger child of the father after Joseph was sold into Egypt, then hopefully you're familiar with it. If you're not familiar with the backstory, you need to get, get familiar with the backstory because right now we're going to have to go forward with this particular teaching right here. So we're speaking about Christ's birth in relation to our own birth. Now, here's our first book on the good news of his imperial majesty, or Gohan. And just the first question and answer, we just want to remind you of the first question and answer here in this interview in roughly around 1968 with Dr. Oswald Hoffman, where he says, Your Imperial Majesty, it is a great honor to be permitted to speak with you today and also to have you as a guest on this special Christmas program, which will be broadcast to people all over the world. Question, Your Imperial Majesty, what is it that makes you want to follow Jesus Christ? His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie, first. When Jesus Christos, or Jesus Christ, was born from Virgin Mary, Mariam, from that time on, he lived an exemplary life a life which men everywhere must emulate. This life and the faith which he has taught us assures us of salvation, assures us also of harmony and good life upon earth. Because of the exemplary character of the life of Jesus Christ. It is necessary that all men do their maximum in their human efforts to see to it that they approximate as much as they can the good example that has been set by him. It's quite true that there is no perfection in humanity to explain of, from, from people doing it themselves, in other words. From time to time, we make mistakes. We do commit sins. But even as we do that, deep in our heart as Christian, we know we have a chance of forgiveness from the Almighty. He taught us that all men are equal regardless of sex, their national origin and tribe. And he also taught us all who seek him shall find him. To live in this healthy life 
a Christian life. It is what makes me follow Jesus Christos. Now, we could go through this, I mean, and it's important for us to keep this, brothers and sisters, in, the, in our memory. You know, you can read it and get familiar with it and even quote it, but sometimes we get rusty and we have to, this is what we have to renew. We have to, like, recharge our spiritual batteries so that we don't run out because the race is not for the swift, but it's for he who can endure until the task is accomplished. One more question. Dr. Hoffman asks, Your Imperial Majesty, what advice would you give a person who is considering the claims of Christ, perhaps for the first time? His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, I would tell a person who was considering the claim of Christ for the first time that it is necessary to have faith in the Almighty, that it is necessary to have love, and that it is necessary to conduct oneself in a manner that we have been taught to do in the Bible. I would also advise him to seek the secular knowledge for the more one knows, the more he realizes the need for a prime mover, the need for a creator, a creator who is good, and the need for salvation and also for peaceful life upon earth. I would also tell him to learn and to think for himself, the ways he would serve the Lord, the ways he would serve Adonai. In this thought and in this undertaking of his, he will inevitably find the way of serving his fellow men, in other words, his brethren, for his faith would then be manifested by his conduct. If Christians behave this way, if we dedicate ourselves or livicate ourselves, livicate I and I selves, if you please, Rastafari, to this fundamental task, then we, I and I, will have a peaceful world a salamawi alam, and will be assured of not transgressing against the will and the commandments of God. Now, this is just a portion from this, this scroll right here. Some hopefully have gotten a copy of it. Some may yet to get a copy of it. This is the gospel of him. This is just book one. But we felt that this was very important for us to put put these sort of speeches and teachings in a book, you know what I'm saying, and in a volume. Because many times we have these speeches maybe a you know, printout here, something there, and something that's pocket size as well. To keep around as a reminder and even if one seeks to share the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ with others who are willing to hear and willing to learn because no need to share it with those who are unshareable or unwilling. It makes no sense. The master tells us, wipe our feet off from there and draw our peace back to ourselves. You understand? But with those who are willing, then all the better. So try to get a copy if you can, brothers and sisters. It's available www.lojsociety.org. Now, in continuing this concerning the new birth, we decided to look up uh, Christ and born and, and look of where it speaks in the Bible of Christ as well as where it speaks of, of, of born. And there are about two, uh, f four places, there are four places actually that we find. One of them is very interesting. We're going to go from the last one in First John because the other ones basically speak of Jesus, um, who is called the Christ, and, and Pilate speaking about 
Christ and then the one which is for actually September 11th, but it can be remembered in this period of time, Luke 2 and 11, where it says, For to you is born this day in the city of David, David, a Savior, which is Christ, or Moshiach, the Lord, the Adonai. Then in 1 John, 1 John 5 and 1, it says, Whosoever believeth, let's update and correct this, whosoever admitteth, admitteth as, as true, or admitteth as truth, or admitteth that it is true, that Yehoshua, Jesus, is the Moshiach, that he is the Moshiach. Yes, there were other messiahs, and even as Christians, Christ-like, we are Messiah-like, but he is the, as his majesty, the imperial majesty says, he is the exemplary. He is the one who is the example. He, he is the template. He is the example. Um, he is the matrix, really. We are born through that, through that template, through that, through that spiritual um, consciousness. That is, what, that is what we have to appropriate. That's what we have to conform ourselves. But before we can, we need to learn. And this is what these teachings are about, becoming more familiar and inspiring the brothers and sisters in this way and in this walk. So whosoever admitteth, which is the upgrade on the word believeth, going to the root amen, uh, amen, and so forth, that Yehoshua, Jesus, is the Christos, that he is the Moshiach, is born of Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, is born of Egeziavi Herlotu Subhat. He is born of true God. And everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. So what Johannes or John is basically stating here is very clear but needs to be meditated on that everyone, all who loveth him that begot, everyone who loves his father also loves the one who is, who is born. And, and that's a principle there that might seem like like common knowledge, but in the wisdom of God, you see the varied applications in this world of these sort of principles. But it begins off to say, whosoever admitteth, believeth, mameneth, yemiyamin, that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Moshiach, that Jesus is the Moshiach. Now, for a lot of folks, people would say, well, of course, because they've always grown up hearing of Jesus Christ or Christianity, but they not understand that in that particular time, there were many others who were saying that they were Christ or claiming to be the Moshiach, claiming to be the Messiah, the one who's come like a David figure to deliver the Israelites from the Roman occupation. It's almost like when we look at black people in America, there's many that many different black folks would say was, was like a Messiah-like figure. Most of the Negroes think of Martin Luther King Jr. as a Messiah-like figure. You understand? They'll say he's like a Messiah. And some of them, if you actually listen to some of these um, Negro uh, documentaries, you know, a lot of these Negroes almost sound like he was, he, he's Jesus in a sense. And it's, they don't say it directly, but they say everything else but say that. Others will look at Malcolm X. That, that if we had listened to Malcolm in the Pan-African movement, one would say, oh, it was Kwame Nkrumah. There are some deadbeats talking about uh, Gaddafi. You understand that he was like a kind of a messiah or something. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of counterfeit false ones. But notice the true one, his majesty, who really was that and is that one who fulfilled both of kingship, both of lineage, both of good works, both of his Christian manhood and his fatherhood, even of us as Ras Teferi. But just like with Christ, there were many that missed it. They missed it then. So be it. But as it says right here, this is, this is a part of that birth idea. Now, what we wanted to share with you in, in context with this, because the question is still, okay, Christ has been born, but what is the practical teaching for us? So let's look up Christ right here, right? And 
there was one, Christ be formed in you. I remember reading this um, somewhere previously before in the scriptures. Now, there are about four, four matches in, in the King James Version. So we're looking up Christ and formed. And this is this word software that hopefully we'll be able to upload and to put at our website and ones can utilize this in their studies. Okay, um, the first one is dealing with um, the false apostles, deceitful workers that transform themselves into apostles. You understand? But we shall know them. And it says here, it says in Galatians 4 and 9, the same book, and actually was in Galatians. Um, okay, we'll move into that. This is 419. And then there is, uh, what is it, uh, Philippians? Philippians perform, that's from perform, so that's not one of them there. And the last one here, it says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in the Moshiach, Yesu. So we're going to focus and continue from Galatians right here and then also lay out some, some practical, some seven practical application points that ones can utilize to remind themselves of those points, those main, those main um, things that prove both to God, the Almighty, and to our brethren and to ourselves that we truly are walking in his way. And we're going to touch on that um, as we move forward. But let's continue the teaching right here where we had left off at verse 26 of Galatians chapter 3 where it says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christos Jesus. This is very important because you hear people saying that everybody's a child of God. The Bible does not teach that. Everyone is a creature of God, but only those who are born again in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach are children. They are the ones who have the right to be properly called children of God, but you have some ignorant and immature and even deceitful workers among the so-called Christians out there that would say that everybody is a child of God no matter what your religion so forth. That's not accurate biblically. The Bible says all are creatures. He's the creator. He created them, but they have not come up to son or daughterhood. They have not come up to the adoption. See, the adoption is about the rebirth, being born again, the regeneration, um, um, being born again from above, the new birth, but mainly about the adoption. Now, as we move into chapter 4, it's going to touch on this adoption, and we connect this with the theme of Lidet, this present um, season theme of Lidet, or the Ethiopian Christmas, or the announcement of the birth of Christ, which was to come and which comes nine months from hence with what we know as Adis Ahmet, or the Ethiopian New Year, Rosh Hashanah, fall festival season. On the first day, actually, of Sukkot, it was the first day of Sukkot, tabernacles, when Christ was born. And it was on the eighth day, the Shemeni Atzeret, when he was circumcised according to Torah. So how dare they say that Torah or the law is done with? They don't, they don't understand what they are saying, and they're misinterpreting our brother Hawari Apollos as well. But Paul even said it. He said the, that when the Lord returns, he's going to judge them by his gospel. And so we have it. But it goes forward to say, for ye, speaking to the brothers and, the, and those in the place Galatia, but also speaking to us wherever we may be, for ye are all the children of God by faith in the Moshiach Yesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Moshiach or Moshi have put on Moshiach. This is so beautiful. This is so interesting. As many as have been what? Baptized into Moshiach. Now, the point about baptism is also another theological doctrinal point that we will probably have to focus on in a couple of uh, teachings and also answer some of the questions concerning it that have come in and others that might come in. But first of all, what does baptism mean? Well, first, we have to deal with the natural first, right? You know, the earthly things. Baptism in the natural is immersion in water. 
is what they call the 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 mikva or the mikva. You understand the mikva bath, immersion in 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 the water where one is fully immersed in, in, into the water, fully, not just sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. You see, most people that quote so-called baptism is sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Or people will say, I was baptized when I was a baby. You were not conscious to make a decision. You were not of the age of, of, of decision-making. Yes, ones might have christened you or had you blessed, but you could not really truly be baptized. I know this is another theological issue people say, but the Ethiopian church baptizes babies, and should we baptize babies? When you understand it in its Hebraic context, it's not so-called baptism of babies, but it's blessing of babies. You understand? It's the blessing. Perhaps people have gotten certain doctrines and names confused. But when we studied in the context of the teachings of His Majesty and the testimony of Christ, we can then put it in its proper in its proper order. But let's move forward. It says, so baptism is an immersion in water. Now, it's interesting if you look up baptism or baptize and water, these two themes together, when they come together in the scriptures, and you will find where it uses the characterization of being baptized with the word, just like one is baptized in the water. And this is a very interesting, um, it's a very interesting uh, quote in the scripture, which is showing us that there is, there is the physical baptism, you understand, know, there's the physical water baptism, but moreover in Christ, we must be baptized in his word. So it's like getting into the word is as a baptism for us. We are going deep in the Word. We're, we're not being like many who are just sprinkled a little bit here and there with the Word, but we are going deeper into the Word. And we're going to get into that scripture there as well where it speaks about, um, in fact, let's, uh, you could, uh, that we don't have that one right there, but where it says, um, baptism, Baptize word, um, and it is in yeah, it's Corinthians, Corinthians, Corinthians right here. Let's open that up. It is the actual, uh, okay, sent me to baptize, uh, uh, to baptize in the, baptize, washing. No, it uses the word, my bad. It uses the word washing. It's in Ephesians. It uses the word washing. And Ephesians chapter 5 and 26, where it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Ephesians 5 and 26. For the true overstanding of baptism in the spiritual sense. Yes, we have the baptism in the physical sense, the physical immersion. Remember, Christ did not physically baptize with water, but he baptized with, with, with Holy Spirit and with fire. So we too must be, remember when Christ said to the disciples that the one is one to sit on one side and the other sit on the other side, he said, can you be baptized with the baptism that I am to be baptized with, with the, the Spirit, but moreover with the fire? You understand the fire, that real, remember he said his word, is a fire. His word is, and as you put these words in your consciousness with faith, true faith, it will, it will open up and, and, and it will begin to burn certain things. You understand? Well, you have to make decisions, you understand, about very serious things in this life that you probably never thought you would have to look at. But that's part of that process of thinking differently, of being born again, of growing up. You understand of growing up. So ones wouldn't say, I'm the same person I was at the, no, that I've grown a lot. You understand? I've grown a lot since then. And in your conduct, as the King of Kings teaches, it should be evident. You understand? This, these are the fruits. When talk about the fruits of the new birth, the fruits of the true Christian. He, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So there is the 
Remember when Christ said, how can you understand heavenly things if you don't understand earthly things? So we need to understand the earthly baptism. It's not just washing off the, the dirt of the body as a, as a bath, baptism, bathing, baptism, baptism. It's not that baptism, though very necessary, but it's now our consciousness, our psychology, our spirit, our mind is being cleansed by immersing ourselves in the Word, by spending that sabbatical time and other time as we can make time, as it was were, to study Scripture, to study the Word and find other brothers and sisters, or even to pray for that the Almighty bring you other brothers and sisters that you can really study the Word with and you can bathe in the Word, immerse yourself in the Word, not just sprinkle, 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 most Christians have a sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. But we're dealing now with being born again. So it says, it says, uh, baptized into Christ and have put on Christ. So being baptized into the Moshiach, we are putting on Moshiach. So Moshiach is almost like, you could say, like a garment in that sense. Why? So we don't walk naked, in other words. We have him as that garment spiritually. We're using an earthly type to explain a metaphysical type because most of this in the scriptures is truly metaphysical, but it uses earthly examples. I call them verbal hieroglyphs, but you have to decipher the verbal hieroglyphs. And for us, the Ethiopic is the key. It says there is neither Jew, black Jew, or Greek, or, or white boy, or in other words, or European, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye all are one in Christos Jesus. Keep it in context. He is speaking to those, remember the context, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. He didn't say you're all children of God, period. No, but by way of imnet, by way of that subjective faith on the objective of the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, and mainly his seed. His seed, spiritually, is his word. Remember the word is like light shineth in darkness, but don't be in the darkness, be in the light, because the darkness does not comprehend the illumination. It doesn't comprehend the light. It goes on to say, for ye are all one in the Moshiach, Yehoshua. Verse 29, and if ye be Christ, if ye be of the Moshiahs, if you are the Moshiahs, as we say we are Rastafari, so that means we must be Rastafaris. We, we are of Rastafari, who is the Christ in his kingly character. Then are ye Abraham's seed. Then and only then do we really have the right to calling ourselves Abraham's seed and ears and heirs or inheritors according to the promise. So those who accept the truth, whether they are black or white, they have a part in the Father's house. Yet the seed, the, 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 the natural branches, also have an important role. So this is saying that, yes, if one is a, a Gentile, not Ethiopian or black folks, they have a part in our Father's house, of course. But there's also a special, a special message with that seed, with that lost sheep who have found themselves or who have recovered themselves or who have repented themselves and become born again and receive that new name. And for I and I, that is Ras Tefari. Verse, verse 1 of chapter 4. I think it's important that we touch on this at least to get to this particular verse 19. Where, where Hawari of Allah says, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again, till Christos be formed in you. It's interesting he said that he's travailing in birth, almost like a mother, because he was teaching like Torah. You understand? He was teaching the Torah. Remember the schoolmaster? The schoolmaster is the Mogzit. A proper translation of that, Ethiopically, is the Mogzit is the nanny. It's like a nanny, a child conductor. 
you know, like in great houses, they would have, have um, I forgot what they call it in some of these um, things, but there's like a nanny who would be over the children and would give them instruction. And all. this is when ones and ones had, you could call it homeschooling. That was homeschooling. You understand? Know and then when they got of age, and, 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 the, and the instructions became like second nature. They no longer needed a, 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 a kind of school master in that sense, you know what I'm saying, because they were not under manners, but they now were in the proper manners. They were not under the law, but they became in-laws. This is the goal. There, there are specific goals in the Christian and the true Arastafari way of life. And we need to become familiar with it because otherwise we stagnate. You know what I'm saying? And when we individually stagnate, even if one of us, the whole movement, because we are to be our brother and our sister's keeper. And if one of us is, is weak, then this is affecting all of us. That's, that's in the true spirit of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now I say, that the ear, the warash, as long as he is a lidge, a child, he differs nothing from a servant. So when we are still in our lidgenet, in other words, like, like when someone says, um, I went to a revivalist meeting, and I heard the preacher preach, and the preacher really touched me with that. I recognized I had to get my life in order. I, gave my, I, I went to the altar call. I gave my life to Christ. That's, that's, that's good. And, and, and then what? I mean, did you continue to grow? I mean, did you recognize that, you know, you are a child? In other words, you, when you're born, you're born again as a child, my little children. And these children need to grow up, so they need to be guided. How have you been guided? And unfortunately, as we've been saying, many have not been guided, but it's almost like, um, almost like in a sense, spiritually speaking, like homeless they, they, they acknowledge or receive Christ, or they seeking to receive Christ, or they think they've become Christian, but they are homeless in the sense that they are growing up on the streets in a sense. They're not growing up in a home, in other words, in a true church home, you understand, which can give them those basics that they can grow on. That the Bible even tells us right here, now I say that the heir, the one who is inheritor of all of this, so each of us as a newbie, a newcomer, is an inheritor of all of this in the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. But as long as we are just Lij, which is the first Daraja as Lij Tafari came before Ras Tafari. He wasn't born and became Ras Tafari, but first had to be Lij Tafari. So even there we have an example. In other words, Yeshua first was a child. He wasn't always, in that sense, the Moshiach or, or, or the Christ on the level of in his responsibility until he came of age. Even the Bible says that Christ grew in wisdom. He increased in wisdom. So some things are according to God's laws, even his natural, his netaru, his nature laws. But let's go on. It says, so now I say that the ear, the warash, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord, though he be a doni of all, although he be the gita of, of all of it, he don't differ anything from a servant. But is under tutors, is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. That's a very key word right there, time appointed, time appointed. You understand, like many view December 21st, uh, 2012 as an appointed time. We know that November 2nd, 1930, an appointed time. We know that July 23rd, 1892, an appointed time. So there are certain times appointed. We know that uh, January 7th, our Ledet or Genna is an appointed time. We know that Addis Ahmed, September 11th, Ethiopian New Year, is an appointed time. But here it says that this Warash, this ear, is just a lich. You understand? Know he don't differ anything from a barrier, from a servant, though he be the geta of all, but is under tutors. He's under tutors. One has to tutor him. The hahu, the fidel, 
um, 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 putter or akutater, numbers and mathematics and, and sciences, they have to be tutored. And governors, ones who have to say, hey, 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 not too much of that. So for, governors, now I want you to understand what Hawaii Apollos, the likeness, the simile, the verbal hieroglyphics, so to speak, that he's giving us, right? He says, under, but it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Ab, of the Abba. There's an appointed time, not of the child, but of the father. Even Yeshua said, my father is greater than I, yet I and the father are one. People have a problem understanding that. That sounds very clear. Him and the father is one, but the father is greater than him. As he is Lord of lords, the father is king of kings. That's proper hierarchy. That's proper monarchy. And that's the half of the story that a lot of people don't want to recognize is already told. It's already a reality. Even so we, even so I and I. So here, Hawaii Apollos is saying, as this is the order in a true house, you understand, in a true house, so is in the house of Christ, the true beta Christian. Even so we, when we were children, in other words, when we were children, we were still young in this. Like many of you, if you're beginning off the Torah portion, reading and feeding, on a certain level, you're, at, you, you're as the Adama as children. I and I have gone through these levels, but it's, these levels are necessary. You know what I'm saying? These are necessary so that when we grow up, we will have a firm standing. And then when I and I come together, what a greater coming together it will be on Mount Zion, Mount Zion, as it is written. So this is very important why this message must go forward. So even so, I and I, when I and I were children, Lijoch, were in bondage under the elements of the world. When we were children, before we were born again, if you're not born again, you're a child, all right, if you're not born again, if you haven't taken this seriously and haven't made a conscious, a conscious decision or decision. You are children of disobedience. There are those children. The, 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 the creatures of God are not children of God until they think differently and are born again, but they are children. They're children of disobedience. They are under bondage and in bondage under the elements, under the elements of the world. You know the elements of the world? Oh, they're going to tell you about tax time coming up. They're not going to tell you that it's Passover or Pesach. They're going to say, oh, you've got to pay your tax. That's one element of the world. This so-called Western New Year, another element of the world. And everything else, look at some of the conspiracy theory and reality videos, and you'll see all the elements, the Illuminati, Freemasons, Satanists, all the elements of the world. Yada, yada, yada. In other words, yada is Hebrew. No, it means to know. Yada, yada, yada. Know it, know it, know it. In other words, uh, the mitmanon is redeemed from under the law. It's not redeemed from the law, but it's redeemed from being under the law and becomes an, uh, an in law. Because someone must execute the law. You see, because no one keepeth the law. The true law of the King of Kings and his Christ. Look at your world. I mean, look at this world. Look at the seclorum. But when the fullness of time was come. I love that right there because you can think what Hawaii Apollos is saying right here, you can look at this in, in, in contrast or in connection with the birth of Yeshua our black Lord and Savior, to the black Madonna, Kedistin, and You can see the, the likeness right here. He's saying, but when the fullness of time was come, it's like, what happens when the fullness of time comes for a woman if a woman is pregnant with a child? What happens? What breaks? The water. The water breaks. Isn't this kind of very interesting? The water breaks. The idea of baptism as a symbol, the water breaks. And water is a half spiritual, is a half spiritual element as well, H2O. So, but when the time was come, it says that God sent forth his son. God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law. God sent forth his son. Our father sent forth his son. You understand? Sent forth his son, 
It says made of a woman. You understand? Made under the law. Made under the law. In, in, in tune with, even we can say, the natural law. See, a lot of people are like, how could that be if there was no man involved? So from some, they, 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 These are still children at science. There's a lot of things in science that they're still learning every day. But it says to redeem the purpose of this action of Elohim sending forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive, here's the key, this word, receive. What, what, what is receive Hebraically and Ethiopically? What's that word? It's called kebele, makebel, kebele, or as y'all might know it, Kabbalah. But not the Kabbalah of the Jews who say they are Jews, and majority-wise are not, but kebele means to receive. But the true Kabbalah or Kabbalah is of the King of Kings, is of Haile Selassie I and his Christ. And now we get to understand that he came to redeem them that were under the law, that we, I and I, might receive the adoption, might receive the adoption of sons, so that that word that he said, I have said, ye are gods, or Elohim. All of you are sons of El Elyon, of the Most High, can become true. Because he's the firstborn of many brothers, of many brothers. So the connection now with the law, with Torah, the connection now with redemption, the connection now with the, the Kabbalah or the Kabbalah to the adoption of sons. Now here the spirit, the manifest actualizes the mitmanon sonship. Now, here's what's the key, that the spirit, you know, the spirit, the mensus caduce, is the one that actualizes it. That actualizes what? The mitmanons, the one who have, has faith, who admits, the admitter in the truth to sonship, to becoming a son or a daughter. Now, this, is, this all connects in a beautiful way if you understand Hebraically or Old Testament, the, the rite of passage known as the Bar Mitzvah or, you know, or the Bat Mitzvah, you understand, or what's known as that, that rite of passage, what the Tizaz or Leta Tizaz, around the age of 13, around the age of 13. Now, notice, we have 13 months of sunshine. There's a 13. It takes nine months for an actual baby to be born. Now, what's interesting is that if we apply ourselves and discipline ourselves to the studies, within that same amount of time, we can be born again firmly in our spirits, in our hearts, in our minds through the teaching of His Majesty and through these Torah portion readings and feedings. If we remember the Sabbath and keep it set apart. You see, it begins with the mind. The Sabbath is, the Sabbath is a is a is a mystery. It's a mystery. I mean, a mystery in the sense that there's much, there's much in it. It, it, it has yet to really be fully overstood from what has been written of it, but there's much that has already been written concerning the importance of the Sabbath, not just the weekly Sabbath, but also the, the annual Sabbaths are those holy days. And as we start to look at the holy Hebraic days, you know, the, the Hebraic count and the holy days, and we comprehend the Gospels and see that Yeshua was a Judahite or a Jew, a Hebrew, we can understand what Paul said when he said that he fulfills. He, Christ, the Moshiach, Jesus Christos, fulfills the Old Testament types. And this is what makes it very beautiful, even the time of Christ's birth. You understand? Even the time of his birth in the fall festival season, corresponding with the Ethiopian New Year, the Yom Teruah, the Festival of Trumpets, Sukkot, in-gathering, tabernacles, the eighth day, the Shemeni Atzeret. So this is very beautiful as he fulfills it, but there's an application now 
a practical application for us as well, both in a remembrance and a thanks to the Almighty, his Father, our Father, for him and for his example, as well as us walking day to day in his way and in that example. So when the two come together, the fullness of Scripture comes to pass. Now, here's a very important area of Scripture, verses 6 and 7, where it says, And because ye are sons, because you are sons, it says, Elohim have sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Abba, Father, Abba. Now, notice, Abba is not Papa, you know, but, but it's interesting if you look at it etymo etymologically. It's almost like the B upside down become a P and all of that. But Abba. Abba means father, or even in a sense like a baba, like daddy in that sense. But Abba, that because we are sons, so he's what Hawaii Paulos is showing is showing the stages as he's speaking to different churches, answering different concerns. When we start to study it and put it together, he's showing us the different stages, the 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 process and and the progress that we can qualify, you understand, know where we're at, you understand, know and what we're doing, and moreover, what we're thinking and what we're meditating and, and how we are seeing this, you understand, know in the mind of Christ, whether we are in the spirit. You see, if we're in the spirit, like we say, the vibes. I and I, like, you know, before, one time I and I was Rastafari, we used to be the vibes things. You know, it's, it's like we, we, we would get the same vibes, like the spirit will speak to us. I'm trying to show you that some things – they might have tried to spook out in the Bible, but we've encountered these same manifestations of truth, even on a spiritual level that you can't put in a, a, a laboratory and, and test it according to the white boy so-called science, but it's real, real, real. These sort of realities, they call it at a certain level magic, you know, miracles. And it is that, but it's more than that. It's the true and the faithful witness. Now, the, spirits, the Spirit actualizes the Mitmanan's sonship. Because ye are sons, Elohim have sent forth the Spirit of his Son. Notice that. He says that Elohim, the true God, has sent forth the Spirit of his Son. His Son, where? Into your hearts. Crying, Abba, Abba, Father, Afro-Shemitic um, nomenclature for Father, Abba. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant. So wait, 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 wait. See, the servant part is in, in the initial stage. One is following. Remember it said that Christ was sent, Yeshua was sent, though he's Lord of all, he came forth like a servant. Though he's Lord of all, he came forth humble like a servant. In our new birth, there's that humbleness to the service. When we talk about doing the works, do the service and learn of the works. And so we're servants, you understand? But at this point, we are no more a servant but a son. And if a son, then an heir, an heir, an inheritor of God, our Father, through, you see that right there in the Bible, through Christ. Not an inheritor of Christ, but an inheritor of his Father, our Father, through. So Christos, the true consciousness of Christos becomes the access. It becomes like that key, almost like that password. You understand? Christ said, pray to my Father in my name. You understand? And in that name. So through Christ, through the Moshiach. Now, it goes on to say that some call this a lapse into legality is to go back to an elementary religion. That's a subscription here, but it says, How be it then, when ye knew not God? I love this verse right here, verse 8 of Galatians chapter 4. It says, How is this, yo? When you didn't even know Jah, ye did service to them which by nature are no gods. You notice that? Many of us say, Yes, I and I, Jah, Rastafari, but. Before we knew Jah, we did service. We did service to what it says right here. It says service to them which by nature, 
by their very nature they know gods. See, that is to remind us that many of us will say, yes, I and I is this now. But when we were not that, we were doing service to these gods, which are no gods. But are we doing his will and keeping his commandments now that we call ourselves Rastafari, now that we call ourselves Christian? That's the question there. But now it says, after that ye have known God, or rather, or known of God. I love how he says that. You know, like once, yeah, you, uh, now that you know Jah, or rather, what's more, more correct, Jah knows you. You're known of Jah. You're known of Jah. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereto ye desire again to be in bondage? This is, I think this is the point that we in the movement and the community right now, even the Rastafari movement are, this is where we're at right now. Is that, is that now we have known Jah. You understand? Know yes, I and I know his majesty. And I know, or rather, we are known of his majesty. We are known of Jah. Okay, if that's true, how are we turning again to the weak and the beggarly elements of Babylon, to the weak and beggarly elements in the course of the world instead of his world? How, how are we going back to the ways of the world and not to serve him in the ways of the King of Kings and his Christ is a question that can also be footnoted to this point Hawadi Yap Aulos says. He says, ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Now, people would say, this is keeping these kind of Hebrew holidays. Is this what he's saying right here? Would, 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 would Hawaii Apollos be talking about how Jah's law and God's and the Christ, the fulfillment of this, and then he's going to call, is Jah's law a weak and a beggarly element or bondage? He's saying bondage to the elements of the world. He didn't say bondage to Torah. So the real understanding is we are observing days, months, times, and years in the worldly, the Roman, the Gentile, even the white wash, because what is a black white thing then? Jew, Gentile, black, white. That's how it goes. If you don't understand it like that, then you're still not getting the full the, the 1080 picture. So he's not talking about Torah or what is concerning God's commandments, because how is he going to then, you know, um, say that say we're heirs of God through Christ? and speak about the importance of Torah in, in growing us up, and then saying we're turning back to Torah, and that's weak and beggarly element of the world. I, I make that point because there are some people who, who try to use this to say that, well, we shouldn't really care about the Hebraic holidays or whatnot or, or any particular days and times because that's observing days and months and times and years and everything. And that would be contrary to the, to the plain point of the text, when you put it in context, that would be like saying that Paul is calling Torah a weak and a beggarly element of the world, when clearly he's saying it's not of the world, but it's a preparatory of God in Christ for us. Just to make that point right there um, clear, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, and I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmity of flesh, of the flesh, I preached the Wengel to you at the first. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel, a melaach of Egeziabihir, even as Christos Jesus. Now, of course, this is a very interesting verse here, too, as well. So he's saying that he had a, a temptation in the flesh, that he was struggling still with his flesh side. See, a lot of us, we say firebun, carnal, firebun, fleshy, and yes, firebun that, but we still are wrestling with these things, you understand? And in order to overcome these things, we can only overcome these things in the Christ of his majesty, in the word of God, properly digested and made one or 
Tawahido Mawahad. So here Paul is saying that when he first came to them, you know, um, he had infirmity of the flesh. It doesn't describe what infirmity, but I know it wasn't just like common cold. He didn't have just a common cold. What sort of infirmity? You understand? What sort of part of his flesh nature was sick? You understand? I mean, it covers, what's interesting, this has an application for all of us who are struggling with the fleshical, the fleshy side of our natures, and the devil is trying to use that guilt trip. You understand? Instead of focusing on the devil's guilt trip, focus on the word of Christ and find out what your, what your rights are, you understand, and the way out. The way out is there, and the Spirit will guide you. So he's saying right here that they received him as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Now, that's, that's kind of very interesting right there. You know, but it's, it, it's not Paul assuming more of himself than he should, but Paul basically following the intent of the Moshiach's teaching. Christ himself says that the work that I do, ye shall do, and greater you will do also. I could say if that's true, well, there must be very few Christians. I don't see no Christians walking on water or healing, you know, raising the dead or, or healing sickness in that way, so to speak. But it's interesting that Christ says that the work that he does, if one truly has faith in his word and keep his word, then they will do the things that he has done and greater things. So Christ is that seed in us for greater but the world teaches you something, worldly Christianity, um, counterfeit Christianity teaches you something totally different. That's how you can know, is, is you measure it by the Word and get a good Bible. That's another thing. They, they have these, these new Bibles out there, which, you know, the devil is wickedly clever. These new Bibles actually delete a lot of the important areas of Scripture, such as uh, Acts of the Apostles 8 and 30. Seven. Go read that. The New Bible will delete that verse or put a footnote that puts that verse in question because it's the Ethiopian testimony to Christ before Rome. Ethiopia followed the way of Christ before Rome. The evidence is there in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. And these new Jesuit Bibles, some of them delete verse 37 and others put a little, uh, a doubtful kind of a footnote saying in some ancient manuscripts, that verse is not there. They mean in some ancient corrupt manuscripts, some, some proto-Vatican or pre-Vatican, you know, this, 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 this mystery of iniquity was, was already at work in the time of Hawadi Apollos. He, he told us it's already at work. So we shouldn't be surprised at how early um, this, this warfare has been, it's been going on since, since the beginning. In legality, the, the Galatians have lost their blessing. He, he goes on to say that, when, where is then the blessedness you spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Some assume that he had um, um, eye trouble. You understand? Eye trouble or, or, or problem with his eyes. He says, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? That's, that is a that is an accurate verse. It says, am I becoming an enemy? You understand that like when I and I say that I and I is Rastafari, we've been called, but right now we're lost, we're astray. So we say, oh, you're not supposed to talk about that. You know, say, well, what's going on? We should be learning in park. Why are we doing this? Oh, don't talk about They become your enemy because you speak the truth. This is a thank you, Hawaii Apollo. She says, they zealously affect you, but not well. Those that seek to... Um, zealously affect you, yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. He says, in a, in something that's good, it is always good to be zealously affected. You know, something that's good, it, it, it's never too bad to be too zealous. But in a bad thing, it's bad to be even a little zealous. But it says, it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. You know, one's always put on the best impression presently, but it really shows not, you're not doing it for other people, but the Almighty 
and the Spirit of God sees you always. So it's doing it in that consciousness so one is perfect, not only so-called perfect in front of people. So this, this is what is part of our growth. This is what really helps towards our being born again. So my little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I think that's an important verse, especially for this um, Lydette 2012 or, or what is it, um, 2000 and, is it 2004 or 7504? Um, according to Chopia, we cannot go to calendar 7504 or 2004 or in the West 2012, this particular Lydette. Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again, until Christos, Moshiach, be formed in you. So he's showing that he is travailing in birth as a minister of this word to this group of Christian, first century Christian. He is travailing in birth, in a sense, to bring them forward in the teaching of God in Christ until Christ, the Moshiach, be formed in them. Well, how is Christ? Therefore, you have to ask the question, well, who is Christ, or what does Christ mean, and how is Christ being formed in us? See, when we, when we comprehend the meaning of Christ is the anointed. You understand? You remember that when a woman becomes an heir, it's like when one becomes a priest, prophet, or king. There's an anointing. That's what we said that the Messiahhood in old Israel was for priest, prophet, and king. And so now Christ now symbolizes that one who is priest, prophet, and king. Now, we coming into our heirship, you understand, in Christ and, and through Christ to his father becoming sons and brothers of Christ, Therefore, there's an anointing process in us that must go on in order for us to be worthy of that inheritance which is already there. In other words, our blessings, brothers and sisters, is already there. It's already there, but it's there in a sense in the antimatter universe. You can't see it with these eyes because you have not brought that consciousness into mind, so these things have not come from the so-called antimatter universe into this universe. I know this might sound a little Star Trek-ish, Stargate-ish, but where do you think they got that knowledge from as well? You understand? Where do you think they derived, derived that? This is basically the half of the story that they're not telling us. But before we get into all that speculation, let us deal with what's right in front of us, that Christ must be formed in us. So we have formation, and then we have information. The information is to get us into formation, but most importantly, for Christ, the consciousness of Christ to be formed in us in spirit and in truth. I desire to be present with you now, brothers and sisters, and truly I do. I desire, as Paul says right here, to be present with you now and to change my voice. For I stand in doubt of you. What's this? Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do you, he do you not hear the law? In other words, some desire to be under Torah. We desire to be in Torah. See, this is a big difference. Some desire to be under the law. We desire to be in laws. And we can go through those scriptures where Hawadi Apollos explains that aspect, proving what we're saying right here. He's saying that there were those who desired to be under the law. Okay, that's good. But do you not hear? Don't you shema? Shema Yisrael? Don't you hear? You understand? Know Don't you hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons. One by bond made, the other by free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh. He was born after the flesh. Very interesting. But he of the free woman was by promise, was by promise. Which things are an allegory? It's a uh, mishle uh, in the Hebrew, 
or Misale in the Ethiopic and, and the Amharic. It's a, it's a proverb. It's a simile. It's a parable. It's an example. It's a verbal hieroglyphic, as we like to say. It's an allegory. For these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar or Hagar. This is interesting because I think we have enough space right here to show that there are, there are two what? There are two, there are two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai or Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar or Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, which answereth, which answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. Now people would look at 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 um at the land of Canaan or Palestine and say, Oh, you talking about that Jerusalem? No, I'm talking about New Jerusalem, I'm talking about Ethiopia. Now if you notice something about this too. Remember, it says these are two covenants, right? One is a mount. Isn't that a mount right there? That's, that's one of them. And then you have the other. So you have these two triangles. You have the upward triangle, like Egypt or Hagar. That's why the Arabs are there today, you know, the Ishmaelites. And you have the other one, that downward pyramid. Now, the downward pyramid is reminding me of the underground, all that which is built underground in Ethiopia. And people are like, what's the reason for that? Well, these are the, this is what we see right here manifest in this symbol, the so-called Star of David. We have the two covenants, the one from Mount Sina, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar, and this Agar is Mount Sina in Arabia, and answer to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. Now, which people have been in bondage and still are in bondage? Is it the white man? Is it the Chinese man? Is it the so-called European Chaza or convert Jew? Or is it the black man? The black man both in the Americas and the Caribbean and even in Africa. And we have to say, even in Ethiopia. So this fulfills this word right now. We look at the Jews. They're not in, in, in bondage. Were they in bondage? Were they, did they go through 400 years of slavery? I, think, I haven't seen no evidence of that. Holocaust, okay, give them that. But, but, I mean, that doesn't compare to the 400 plus years which fulfills the scripture. So we now have even another bit of evidence to add. But Jerusalem or Jerusalem, which is above, is free. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all, the Jerusalem, which is above. Now, this also can be prefigured in this, the downward triangle, a mountain, which is in bondage, and that up one, the, the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, but ones who are looking up in the sky and expecting to see this like a physical reality, and they forgot that before it can be this physical reality, you know, saying it can come into the physical world. The spirit, you know, saying has to receive it, has to accept it. You know, saying in order to bring it in, you know, saying into this olam or this alam, which is Jerusalem, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free and is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not; break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. It's interesting because you can interpret that in a couple of different ways, and it fits kind of what's going on right now with like the baby mama dramas and deadbeatism and all these schisms amongst the lost sheep. But at verse 28, now we, brethren, as Yishak was, are the children of Tesfah or promise, of expectation. But as then, he that was born after the flesh, the one that was born after the flesh, fleshy, the carnal, persecuteth him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? About all of this, what does the scripture say? 
cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So what it is it, it, it's emphasizing, Paul, Hwadiya Paulus, emphasizes this idea of separation. Why be unequally yoked? You understand? Know of separation. You know and so as we grow in consciousness, even Christ's consciousness, it calls for us, now that we are being guided spiritually, to separate from the fleshy, to separate from the fleshy. Now, how one does it depends on what situation. These are things for prayer and meditation and asking the Almighty in and through Yesus Christos for the wisdom to make the, the wise and the proper decision considering what ones and one's circumstances may be. Verse 31, to complete the chapter. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman. We are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. We're not children of the bondwoman anymore. We were when we were fleshy and fleshical and, and still outside of the grace of God in Christ. But now that we have entered in to covenant with the King of Kings in his Christ through, firstly through repentance, through that thinking different, through studying and showing ourselves approved. Remember I said I wanted to touch on these, um, these uh, seven points. And I'm just going to go through this because I know we have a, we have a time. Let's check out the time, um, the time that we have in this particular um, um, teaching right here. But um, let's go through these, these, these basic uh, seven, seven points and seven matters that will help and assist us in becoming and maintaining a, a Christ-like, a King of Kings and his Christ-like um, walk. You see, because many Christians uh, talk about we're not under the Old Testament, and that's true. But they act like the, 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 there's no purpose in Torah. And there are numerous times that Jesus Christos, that he spoke about the Torah or the laws of Moses. Now, these laws are found in the Torah, the five books of Moses, which are also called the Pentateuch. I mean, there are, if you have, if you have a pen and paper, I could just go through some of them the areas where Christ spoke about Torah in Luke chapter 2, verse 27, in Luke chapter 10, verse 25, 28, Luke uh, 24 and 44, John 1 and 17, John 1 and 45, uh, John 7 and 22, and verse 23, and John chapter 8, verses 5 and 12. One of the very relevant areas, you know, as you hear these different areas of Scripture that, that bears witness that the Torah or the laws that were sent have a purpose in true Christian and true Christianity, not like they teach you in counterfeit Christianity. He did not bring any new laws. Yeshua didn't bring any new laws. He perfected it. He did not subtract you understand, from the laws. He perfected it, and he perfected how to, how to keep it in and through that exemplary life and through that consciousness that we know as true Christos consciousness, Christ consciousness. In Luke chapter 5, verses 17 to 19, we have Christ saying, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily, boldness in truth, Aman, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law or pass from Torah, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do, shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the Mengishta Samayat, in the kingdom of 
heaven. So these are some of the 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 quite the the the, the Christ-like qualities, you understand, know that true professing Christians, and especially for us as those of the new name in the King of Kings and his Christ, you understand, know must seek to keep and must seek to do. First of all is remembering the Sabbath, remembering the Sabbath, and thereby in the remembrance of the Sabbath, the, the Shabbat, we upkeep Edisana, we upkeep holiness, we upkeep the sanctification being set apart, you know what I'm saying, as well as the health, the, the, the psychological benefits and even material benefits that are accrued by even the, the, the healthiness of our minds and, and the opportunity to rest and to recharge spiritually. This now helps us in our worldly warfare and in our business and labors you understand, to have the proper energy and the focus of mind, not just to survive, but to overcome and to be blessed. So there's no curse against riches if they are properly gotten with the first things first and having a proper um, spiritual foundation. Exodus 31 and 15, remember the Sabbath and upkeep the this and that. We are also, secondly, to follow Jesus, Zenaz Retu, and to become his disciple, to become his student. To, he says, to learn of me, to learn of him. In other words, this is what we speak of when we say from Timothy to study and to show thyself approved to God as a what? A workman. You're not lazy, not serafet, you know what I'm saying? But we, we have work to do. But we just can't say, oh, I not got to do this work because we're just doing it in our, our unrepentant and unregenerated mind. And this is why we have seen so much failure. Even as I know, as Rastafari, and I know a lot of people don't like this to be said, but, you know, we haven't been doing the King of Kings way. And many of the elders may have been sincere, you understand? Many of them were right about many things, as we check it by the standard of the King of Kings. But many of them were very sincere, but were sincerely wrong. And we can either um, do the will of the King of Kings and his Christ, or do the will of men and people, whether we call them elder or grandfather or daddy or whatever, you know, whether we want father or lad, lad or whatever like that, or we can submit ourselves to the true Lord or our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, in and according to the teachings of his imperial majesty. Study and show ourselves approved and to grow up into him into all things. So the first is to remember the Sabbath, upkeep Kedisna. Second, is to make that conscious decision to follow Jesus Zednaz Reitu and to become his uh, Dekamesmor or disciple to study and show ourselves approved. Thirdly, by doing this, but mainly in accordance with this, we learn of his father. You see, we learn of his father. One may think they know Haile Selassie, but if you do not know his Christ, Jesus Christos, in and according to his teaching, then you truly do not know Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba So thirdly is to learn of his father, follow his Torah, you understand, law. In other words, what we just discussed from Galatians, where the Lord has an important role as our schoolmaster. Exodus 9 to uh, 10, uh, uh, Exodus, I think this is chapter 9, but it's in there. There's a couple of places. Well, We'll get these uh, in our rough notes right here. Um, but in Exodus, fourthly, let's move through this with the time we have here, is the, is the wearing of ornaments. Now, what do we mean by the wearing of ornaments? More correctly, the white, the linen garments or our, our um, holy Ethiopic Hebrew garments, our true, like this is like a, our Ethiopic, we say like a talit, or we call it the, 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 uh, a metala, some may call it a shawl, or, or a, a, a shawl in that sense, shama, netala. In the Hebrew, the talit, you understand? 
but this is part of our ornaments. Now, we can show you actually in the scriptures when the Israelites refused to wear their holy clothing. And this is, this is, this is like what we're experiencing right now. When we read it in the scripture, we think, why did all these niggas didn't want to put on their holy garments? You understand? And they lost a big blessing. They, it, it, it was a major, I mean, can you imagine the, the, the Father's heart and Christ's heart as that, as that, as that open uh, disobedience, uh, foolishness? But then when you look at folks today, they want to wear all of these um, worldly fashions, you understand? They don't want to work because it's, if, if, if the Gentiles do it, then they will follow the Gentiles. They won't wear skulls and bones on themselves. You know, like, the, like, it's like just a bullseye, you know, like they're a target or something. They don't want to wear their ornaments. See, Scripture call it the ornaments, our, our holy garments, wearing the, the white linen garb. And brothers and sisters out there, I'm put this word out there, Invest in linen. In other words, check out what you know on linen. If you know where, where some fine, pure linen can be gotten, send I and I a contact on that. Please do. We just put this word, and we might get into this a little bit more so. But this is what we mean by our Ethiopian or our Ethiopian holy garments. You understand? Our Hebraic, our biblical, scriptural garments, and the Ethiopian garments are in that basic design the basic design, but the fabric is very important. The linen is very important. We might get into some of the additional reasons why linen, and this might be one of the reasons why linen has become so hard to find. It's a very holistic, metaphysical, um, holistic uh, benefit to linen as well. But that's the fourth point there. Is, is it, see, the, the garments is not first. What's first is the mind, remembering the Sabbath. You understand the upkeeping condition and how to keep it set apart. Secondly is, see, you have to remember the Sabbath because the Sabbath now gives you the opportunity to, to recharge in the Yeshua's crystal, recharge in, the, in, in Scripture, to study, to learn of the Father, to, to follow his Torah, to, to grow up in this way as Paul demonstrates in Galatians chapter 3 and 4 in order to become worthy of the inheritance, to become prepared for the inheritance. Because even though you may grow up, you may get big, you may be like big boy. You may get big physically, but you still are childish, you understand? And no proper father would um, give the keys to the kingdom to one who is not prepared. So that is why there's this seeming delay that we're in this time of delay. It should have been done already, but are we prepared? Could we really handle the, the Mangishta Semayat? That's a good question. Think about it for a moment. Fifthly, prayer. Salot. See, by this point, by this point, this doesn't mean that one has to do the, all this all one day. You understand? But these are, these are certain steps, you understand, in our progress. Pray by way of prostration. You see, a lot of folks, you know, they, they, they call it standing prayer. Um, we're going to have to go through a prayer, a prayer lesson because a lot of things are confused in prayer. You understand? Because prayer is, 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 is an act. But within, prayer is an institution in a sense. Within that prayer, there's different aspects. There is worship aspect. There's praise aspect. There's like abetuta. There's petition. You understand? There's supplication. You know, um, there's intercession. All this takes place within what is generally called or prayer. So prayer is like a, a house, and there are many different mansions or, to say, departments within that house, but it's all one house. And the scripture gives us the best evidence of that, so I'll deal with that in a little bit more detail, y'all woman. But the first thing is prayer by way of prostration. You know, the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. If you go to most of these churches, they don't even bow down when they pray. You know, but, but so the devil really has crept in, and false apostles really have entered in and um, sold um, seeds of, 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 of deception and ultimately destruction. Sixthly, for the, for the brothers, I say for the brothers especially, is, is the wearing of a beard. Really, I mean the wearing of a beard, Leviticus 19.27. I know some would say, Oh, my job doesn't permit me to wear a beard. Now, if that's so, 
this is not this is not the, the end all and be all of faith. You know, if you have to um, suffer that for a little bit longer until one gets the wisdom of how to overcome that so they can be in good standing. But wearing a beard is, is, is for those who can't grow a beard, you understand? You know, this clean face, dread kind of thing, looks nice in the world. So they have one foot in the world and one foot uh, heading towards the Father's house. They're going to get split. As it says, one will get split like hypocrite, you understand? And... The words of the wise should be sufficient. So the sixth point is is the wearing of a beard. Now, for the um, sisters, this point would also be concerning concerning you know certain proper garments for the sisters and not to look like uh, Elzebel and Jezebel and you know some of these so-called diva mini it was a mini Minaj, it was a Nicki Minaj and and little Kim and and all this kind of crazy stuff, you know what I mean? And well, we'll testify on 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 that at another time, right there. But um, these are some of the precepts. These are some of the precepts here that that help us with that new way of life and that new mind state and that new discipline. Because it's not just about teaching, but it's also about learning to do and doing and teaching. So the seventh now deals with, these are summary points, deals with um, uh, what they call dietary, but we'll call it levitary or certain Levitical um, livet, not the diet, but the livet. Avoiding partaking of, of unlawful or non-kosher foods. Yeah, I know a lot of folks been taught that if you pray over it in Jesus' name, then the food is clean. And you see a, a lot of these um, Christians who believe that coming down with a lot of um, physical ailments. I'm not questioning what their faith is. But what is their maturity? I'm not questioning whether they have faith or not have faith. I, they must have some faith. But what is their maturity and what is their discipline and obedience or how they have been hoodwinked and bamboozled? Mm. They would talk about I and I and the Aishans, and there are dozens of reports that prove that the herb, you understand, the, the kana balsam is, is medicinal, is healing, is is, is, is you know, it's it might be abused by some, you know, along with, with 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 drugs. You know, people might smoke marijuana with drugs like crack or cocaine or some opiate and therefore it gets a bad name among the among the ignorant, you understand, know of being a drug, but truly it's not. It's a plant, it's a herb, you know? And they will have a problem with this, but I don't find any prohibition to the cannabosum in Scripture. In fact, I and I find the cannabosum actually in the Scripture, you know what I'm saying, and to be used for the service of man. But, you know, this is part of the, the weak and beggarly elements of the world that persecutes the herb, and then in the counterfeit Christian churches will tell people, you can't eat pork, you can't eat deadest, you can't eat a whole bunch of, of and this is not to say that even in the community, there wouldn't be those who might eat certain flesh. But understand this. There's a, there's a particular, who gives the authority for you to kill one of his creatures? He does. So he, given that authority in Scripture, says it must be halal. It must be kosher. Do you know what kosher entails? Now, if you are of a Christ consciousness, you might learn what kosher, how to bleed an animal. But if you have to go through that to have a, a Big Mac or a hamburger, you see, you go to these idol shops and have that, and that is killing you. And that also is, I'm not going to say it's affecting your spirit so much, but it's affecting your body. You understand? And if it affects your body, then it's going to affect your mind. And if it affects your mind, well, of course, there must be some effect or defect, spiritually speaking. This is why the Almighty, in giving these holiness, medicinal laws to the Beta Israel, included healthiness. 
because he said that the people would inherit a land and, and was to have life and life more abundantly, not to be all sickly, as many Christians are because they have been told a lie concerning dietary and libertary sort of things. But the seventh point, food now being not the first thing, but, but once one goes through this process and becomes um, um, immersed in the word, baptized in the word, and they begin to think differently and be, be conformed not to the world but be transformed by renewing their mental, their mind state, the food part becomes the easy part. So we do not advise people, oh, just stop eating this automatically and you're still, you're still ignorant. You understand? You still haven't really um, consciously made certain decisions and begun that process of growth and study and getting information so you can get in the Christ formation. So that's what's first. First is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So that is the seventh point there concerning the avoidance of partaking of unlawful or non-kosher food. Uh, if one needs a list of these foods, you can find it in the scripture, so forth and so on. Now, some might say, well, we as Rastafari are vegan or vegetarian. That is, that is, that is the vision. That is the ultimate uh, conclusion of the matter. But we still must go those steps by steps and recognize that other brothers and sisters are coming from different experiences, different, different demonic and demons and, 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 and delusions have affected each of us somewhat differently. So by, when we study the word, it prepares us for the full range you know, of the spiritual warfare. And different ones will grow in different Measures. We are to be our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper in, in, in love, in faith, in, 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 in the good will, you understand, and not to be uh, tyrannical. I hear some, some of you all say, oh, if somebody's eating some meat, and this is not to say, people say, oh, you must be eating meat or something like that because you don't defend that. No, we're defending the teaching of his majesty. What are you defending? Be that as it may, think about it, answer it, answer it honestly before God in Christ, and, and, and let us move forward. So, once again, Melcom Ledet Adarasachu, and this is a message on um, the, the birth of Christ, or the announcement of the birth of Christ, as well as the announcement that we need to be born again. And in that process of being born again, we need to grow up to him in all things. So brothers and sisters, once again, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam, Shalom Rastafari, this is your brother, Wendem Yadam. Shalom.